doesn't seem to be any oil in there like the 335 but it is still quite mucky <laughs> That's one way to do it. Right guys, so welcome back to another video. It's time to go stage two on the Mark 7. I'm gonna split this into two different videos though. So in the first one, because you guys like all this DIY stuff, we're gonna give the car a once over, install all the parts that make it ready for stage two. And in the second video, we're gonna head over to MRC Tuning in Banbury. I'm gonna tune the car on the dyno. And then in the same video, I'll give you guys a first drive. But yeah, let's get started. Right, so I've got the table all laid out with the various parts that we're gonna be installing throughout today's video. I'll start with the most basic thing, which is this oil filter, which is obviously gonna be needed because we're gonna be doing an oil change. I've got a replacement sun plug as well, which is made out of plastic. In regards to the ignition system, I've gone for a set of colder spark plugs from NGK. So these are the R7438-9s. Some people get dash eights, but I've been recommended these for stage two and above. And we're gonna be teaming that with a set of APR coil packs. Now there's a fair few jokes about these things on the forums about whether they actually do anything. I've bought them mainly as a preventative measure because these look like early revision ones and they're likely gonna have issues later when we tune the car even further. So I thought I might as well put these in and they're red as well, so they look nice. Moving on, we've got this piece of plastic, which is actually a blanking plate for the stock airbox. It's actually genuine VW as you saw there. And we've also got a forge inlet pipe. So this thing's all combined. So you don't have to get like a separate turbo elbow and an intake pipe. We've also got this catless down pipe here as well. I've gone for like a relatively inexpensive one. It's just straight off eBay. It's like a Toyo Sport one. So I thought I'd try and do like a more of a budget stage two. Now we are going to remain on the stock intercooler for today's video. I will upgrade it later when we go to the next stages of build, but I'll keep quiet on that for now. And over here, I've got a few bits from the guys at ID Works. I'm going to put their Instagram on the screen here and I'll put a few links in the description. They've supplied me with a Ram air panel filter for the stock air box and some lovely Miller's Nano Drive oil. I've gone for 5W40 NT Plus. Apparently this is the good stuff. I've never tried it in any car, so I'm looking forward to it. What we'll begin with first though is the spark plugs and coil packs. Now some of the tutorials I've watched online of these being removed. They have ground wires on them on the top, but these don't seem to have any. There's just four 10 millimeters. So we'll start removing these. Got lazy. Let me get a pick in here. This wire on top is very snug. <sighs> and here we have it, one of the old coil packs. I believe it's an E-revision. But yeah, fundamentally it was still working, so still would do the job. But yeah, it's getting changed. Doesn't seem to be any oil in there like the 335, but it is still quite mucky. Might give them a bit of a clean before I um, put the new ones back in. Now it's time to remove the spark plugs. I'm going to use a 5.8 spark plug socket or 16 millimeters if you're here in the UK. I got it off Amazon. It already came with this 3.8 extension on it see what they're like and what actual plugs are in it. Condition actually doesn't look too bad. Tip still intact. Doesn't look all burnt up. It's a Bosch R1 double platinum. So here's the old spark plugs. As we can see, we've got a bit of grime on number three and four, but fundamentally there's no real big issue here. That's the NGK. As you see, the tip is totally different. So we'll get those in now. They don't have to be gapped. They already come pre-gapped, so you don't have to worry about any of that. What you want to do is hand tie them first. And then once that's all done, you want to torque them to 30 new meters across the board. And then the new coil packs, all exactly as it was before when you were removing them. Now that those are all in, we'll just do a quick start up just to make sure it's all sound. Right, so I'm happy with that. So we'll move on to the intake system next. We'll have a look at the condition of the filter, change out that turbo inlet pipe. But before we go ahead and do that, make sure you do subscribe if you are new to the channel and you enjoy the content I've been putting out. I've got a lot more DIYs coming your way, so make sure you do stay tuned. Now to give you guys a better look at what we're dealing with here, this one pipe is gonna join on from here on the stock air box, all the way directly straight onto the turbo charger. So there's no turbo elbow involved. And I've just had a look there. We've got a T30 that we need to undo. And then we're going to have this PCV hose that we need to get off as well. Let's get that off. And then you're going to have a Jubilee clip on the right hand side here holding this pipe on. It looks to me like it's a 7 mil. I'm going to cover this with a rag so nothing falls in the turbo whilst we're just working on this. And we're going to remove that T30 down there. You can see just right there. Now, I think that doesn't actually come out entirely. It just is basically attached to the turbo. So it just hooks it in. So I'm gonna push the turbo elbow towards the car and then you should be able to get it out. Looks like it's coming free. Now we've got this PCV hose to uh, get off, but all right, flattened out there as well. 
Oh dear. And there we have a stock turbo elbow on a Mark 7 GTI. Obviously this has an IS20 turbo standard, but the process is the same on every EA Triple A Gen 3 as far as I'm aware. Now if you look at the difference there between the one I'm putting on, yeah, it's pretty noticeable, isn't it guys? Pretty noticeable. Now this Forger one doesn't seem to have any instructions with it, but it looks pretty straightforward. The only difference I can see is it doesn't have a T30 on it to hold it in. I feel like all of these wiring harnesses are in the way when you're putting this massive pipe on. What I'll do, I'll open the airbox so it gives us a bit more space. Okay, first look at the filter. You can take this off over here, let that balance there. A bit of muck in there. Some feathers, maybe it's ate a bird somewhere along in its life. Now, if you look here in the airbox underneath the filter, we've got this weird kind of guard which protects against snow and grit. I am going to be removing this. Most of the tuners will also advise you to remove it as well if you want the best airflow. That's one way to do it. I thought it'd be a bit more dignified than that, but it's quite clipped in. I'm never going to use it again, but yeah, if you break yours or you want to put it back in, don't blame me. Just gave the airbox a bit of a clean. It's now time to put in the... Um, Ram air filter that I got from the guys at ID Works should slot in nice and easy. Now I tell myself I'm going to separate this and just put the pipe on after I've got this on because this seems to be the main issue. Yeah, that's fully secure. You've got to twist it as well afterwards. This is probably the correct instructions, isn't it, guys? I'm just here yeah, playing myself. Right, so that's all sorted finally. The fitment could be a bit better on this end, but it's on pretty tight, so I don't see it going anywhere. So we've got this piece of plastic that I showed you guys earlier. I'll explain to you the logic behind it now. So we've got this duct here that takes in air and feeds it into the air box and obviously down there into the turbo. But if you look here at the front of the car, the left side is open straight into the engine bay. On the right side is actually closed, so no air can actually get through the duct. I can understand why VW probably did it, is to prevent against like crazy weather they build these cars to survive a variety of conditions not just for performance now where this is going to come in is it's going to block this part of the duct at the back and it's going to force air along there into the airbox you can also drill this part out and some people even put a little vent on the top here i'm not going to be doing that in today's video but that may be an option later on now because this is an oem part it pretty much just clips in doesn't seem to be any screws as far as i can see obviously this airbox is a bit old so maybe it's flexed a bit Yep, it looks like I've broken the tabs, folks, so we're going to have to abort this idea, but it's there in case you want to do it in your own car. But just be a bit careful with it. Now, conveniently, after that piece of plastic broke, it started raining, so you joined me about a day later. Yes, you aren't seeing incorrect. I have had a haircut, but apologies for the lack of continuity. What I'm going to do is turn the car on now so it gets up to temp, and then we'll start draining the oil. Okay, so the engine's all warmed up. What I'm going to do before we begin, I want to get you some sound clips of the new intake system. <laughs> Okay, so before we start draining, I want to do a couple of things. First, lift up the dipstick so we can get a bit of air flowing through. And we're also going to undo the oil filter. This is a 32 millimeter socket, so you'll need one of these big old things. Loosen it off. And I'm also going to remove the oil cap as well. Now, because the lighting might be poor under the car, I'll give you a quick idea of the drain plug here. So as you can see, it simply undoes with a flathead screwdriver. And on the other side, it has this kind of ridge where it locks in. So once you twist it enough, and it catches, that's when it's locked. There's no torquing or anything like that. It's just a simple piece of plastic. But yeah, let's head under the car. Now to give you guys an idea where the drain plug is, it's at the back of the sump. I'll zoom in with the camera now. You can see, as it just focuses, that little black screw there, which looks exactly like the one I just showed you before. Yeah, there it goes. Okay, so for the most part, the oil looks like it's done. We'll put the new drain plug back in. Right, so that's done. It pretty much just catches in this little ridge here. What we'll do now, we'll head back up to the top. In here, there's going to be this thing that sticks out. It's part of it anyway. And you're essentially going to be pulling the filter straight over it. Now, there's one other thing that you need to do before you put the new filter in. It's not as basically just a case of whacking it straight in. There's an O-ring on here that you want to get off. Use a pick and you'll get a fresh O-ring supplied with your oil filter anyway when you get a new one. So put this back on. It's going to get a bit of the old oil and then just put it around the O-ring on the edges so it's not dry. And then new filter in. Going to clean the top of this oil filter because it's obviously coated at the minute. Don't need to get it everywhere. It just needs to be in the engine. There is already a tiny bit of oil there around the filter area. So yeah, if there isn't anything there, put a tiny bit in. Everyone's got their own methods. And then you want to torque it to 
25 new emirs and now it's finally time to put in some lovely miller's nano drive oil i'm going to put the links to this in the description if you want to buy some the total oil capacity of these engines is 5.7 liters so this is five i'll put the whole thing in and then i've also got a one liter can five liter bottles will finish before i put in the remaining amount i'm just going to check the dipstick makes it nice and easy to have a look at because we've got a physical one we don't have to turn the car on and get a read in and wait for it to warm up like the 335 let's have a look okay not a very conclusive reading we've got oil all over the place looks to me like where there's a bit of a gap is around half but what i think i'll do rather than putting in say even half a liter i'm gonna put in about 300 mil so it leaves a bit of capacity and then i'll keep the oil bottle in the boot of the car and I can top it up as necessary all sorted okay so now that we're done with all our essential pre-tuning checks and maintenance it's finally time to do the downpipe installation for this part of the video we're going to head over to my mate's garage i am going to be doing the installation myself but just using a two-pass lift makes it easier for filming so yeah let's crack on okay first thing i recommend is letting the car cool down it's still pretty hot to touch even though it's been off for 45 minutes but yeah once you've done with that you want to undo two things so the first thing is the lambda sensor connector simple clip you press down on the tab here and the other main thing you want to undo the factory v-band which is a six millimeter allen head it helps to have one of these flexi ratchets just to give it more space because this allen head i'm using is quite long so what i did first was put it on it's right there and then i put the ratchet on afterwards gives you an idea what that looks like downpipe is still pretty seared onto the turbo there but once we're under the car i'm sure it'll be easier to pull off just needs a bit more leverage. So we lift the car up now. Okay, so we're under the Mark 7. I've got plenty of lights and stuff so you can see exactly what's going on. This is a totally standard exhaust. It's never been altered from what I can see. This is an OEM clamp. Well, we test fitted a socket on there and we sprayed it with WD-40. Now the downpipe, of course, roots through there onto the turbocharger. There's gonna be another bracket holding it on. Then we've got these hanger bolts, two of them here. And to make our access a bit easier, we're going to remove these axle shield bolts. There's two of them. And then we've got this as well. Now, these two are a 13 millimeter socket. Same with this bracket as well. Just want to get out of the way. And there's two 16 millimeter bolts for the axle shield. This is right above the sump, as you can see. That's the drain plug there, as you saw earlier in the video. So the next part of the process is removing these two bolts that hold the downpipe onto the block. I've got it here on the decal so you can see a bit easier, but if I shine the light up there, one is there and the other one is there. So we'll have a look at what size they are now. So I've managed to slot on a 13 millimeter socket. It's probably easier to use a, a ratchet spanner on the other one and get that one off. So now in theory, the downpipe is pretty much, yeah, it's just fell off there now off the turbocharger. All that's holding it on is that middle clamp. Now this is where it will be an issue if you've got an older Mark 7 like this, and that's the reason why it's sprayed with WD-40. These are pretty much spinning when you're undoing them, and this takes quite a bit of force to undo it as well. Now this one, I'm gonna have a go at it now. Worst case, we'll have to cut it. Okay, so in typical fashion in these videos, nothing ever goes to plan or is as straightforward as the other tutorials you see on the internet. We had to end up cutting this thing off while my friend did it because it's a bit more handy with the grinder, so I just let him crack on. Now I had to go and get a replacement clamp from the VW dealer, cost me about 30 quid, but it was the only way we were gonna get this job done. So as you can see here, it's fully been chopped off. The thing was pretty much fused. This clamp should move back now. And there we have it, down pipe or loose well. For the most part, I'm gonna twist it out in a specific way. Now we've gotta swap over this rubber bracket over to the new one. And we've also gotta swap over the O2 sensor now, don't make the mistake I did and not unplug the black connector properly. That's what was a bit snagged, but my bad, here's what it is. To remove that, I'm gonna use an O2 sensor socket just to make life easier. And this is what one of those looks like. I got a set of three off Amazon. That did the job. This is a method that I prefer to use when working on a Mark V, so should do the trick here. They are quite stuck on, so. Nothing's gonna break. And then it's just as simple as reversing what you just did. So O2 sensor into this hole here. And then for putting on this rubber mounting bracket, you might wanna use a bit of silicon spray or something to just help you get it on in case your downpipe that you're putting on has slightly different sort of end bits because they all vary. But yeah, just put a bit of force on it. That's the best advice I can give. So first let's put this clamp over the top there so it's ready when we put the new downpipe in. I'm gonna do a bit of 
twisting. I've just put this sleeve over it just to see that it all matches up as you can see that's where the exhaust kind of downsizes to the factory cap back that still is going to be quite restrictive but I'm going to address that soon so before you put all the bolts and nuts back in on the downpipe underneath the car you do want to come back into the engine bay and line up the v-band clamp properly because I did tighten a few of the bolts but then I couldn't really quite get this perfectly flush and that's obviously the main part that you want to get flush. So that's all nice and lined up. I'm going to send the car back up again, tying up everything underneath. All of these bolts are in, all tight. Fitment is actually decent. This clamps back on now as well. This brace is all back on. Showed you earlier in the video how it all comes off. There's not really much to it. That's all you really got to worry about if you got a bit more of an older Mark 7 like this. But I bet some of you guys with your uh, fresh TCRs won't have any of this to worry about. So I'm going to plug this Lambda sensor back in. Black connector. I'm just going to tighten up this V-band. Flexi head ratchet does the job. And there we have it. Downpipe installation all done. Now I'm not too sure how well it sounds on video, but in real life it's quite noticeable. The overrun's gone about five times louder as well. Not that I'm a big overrun fan, but yeah, nice bang hero there isn't too bad. But yeah, what we'll do, we'll end the video here. Make sure you drop a like on if you enjoyed it and stay tuned for the next one where we head down to MRC Tuning, get you guys some dyno pulls and all that good stuff. But yeah, I'll stop talking now and I'll see you in the next one.